Hi, I'm Jason Spiro. I lead global commercialization efforts for Google's performance media products. So we're talking about search, display, programmatic, our GMP platforms, measurement, et cetera. Um, we're the voice of the customer in Google's product development process. We bring the market to product and we bring products to market. In this episode of the update, I will talk to Jason Spiro about why clear marketing objectives are critical in the age of automation. I've heard you talk a lot about consumer transformation on mobile and the rapid behavior shifts we're seeing today. So can you share the parallels you see here? So much of the challenge marketers face today reminds me of what we saw 10 years ago. Uh, my first job at Google uh, was to help Google and our partners understand and navigate the dramatic change that came from consumers' adoption of mobile devices. For Google, this ultimately meant transforming our products pretty fundamentally. For marketers, as you know, Marie, this meant rethinking user engagement and user empowerment. It required huge changes to their marketing in order to succeed. I'm seeing a lot of the same disruption and need for adaptation today. Whether consumers are interested in a car or a new pair of shoes, we're watching the rapid shift toward a much more nuanced and complex customer journey. And we're seeing the accelerated importance of digital marketing. The good news is we see innovation everywhere. In some ways, we're ready for this moment. Uh, the industry is going quickly and there are digital tools that have become incredibly powerful. But in other ways, our marketing and marketers are extremely stretched. So Jason, what do you think is the biggest challenge that is faced by marketers today? I think I'd point to complexity. Uh, there are just so many different places to engage with consumers today. I hear this from marketers in just about every conversation I have, that to address the evolving customer journey, the industry's come up with all these specialized media and formats. So teams have to be expert in dozens of different point solutions for each point along the journey where they want to invest. Then marketers need to invest in the post-processing to stitch that all back together to have one unified view of, of the customer. This is a ton of work uh, and it's not at all scalable. And in many cases, we lose our goals in the translation. Each of these media strategies and buys is an approximation of our business goals. Uh, in the end, marketers are struggling to keep their media aligned with their marketing objectives and we're losing fidelity to what really matters to the brand. So goals getting lost in translation. What does it look like in the real world? You know, one of the, the things I see most often is I see people lose sight of what the original marketing goal was. So many marketers limit their strategy to focus on one particular part of the customer journey. They say, I want to win the sale. So they focus mostly on media that they believe is close to the purchase. Maybe that's search or remarketing or something else. Uh, or they want to drive awareness. And so they buy um, high reach video or social. Um, but all of that media is then managed to these proxy metrics, which you will remember. Um, and everyone spends the next two to three years of their lives optimizing to these proxy metrics. But they may have lost track of the original goal, um, which is to sell a product or get people to try a product or to become more aware of a product. And the actual media goals get separate from the marketing goals. Sometimes I've seen marketers losing track of the business goal. So did you see that too? Yeah, you're so right. Um, sometimes the marketing goals in these proxy metrics, as you say, come out of alignment with the business goals. And I would point to things like ROI, which is central for so many marketers um, and a valuable tool, but it can detract from what's most important. And maybe I'll give you uh, an example. Um, take a scenario where you could invest a dollar and, and get $10 in return or invest $100 and get $300 back. Um, on a strict ROI basis, the 10 for one um, wins, um, but it might lead you to refuse to invest more even when you know that you could get sort of this larger return on, uh, on revenue and profit and growth. And, and, and a marketer who's focused on profit or overall growth just missed out because they run their marketing off that ROI proxy metric. Across both these examples we just talked about, we think a marketer should be able to state a marketing goal, customer acquisition or driving footfall to a store, or a business goal, profit or growth, and that all of their marketing, their media should work in service of that goal. What can we at Google do to help marketers become more successful? Well, I think the first thing is agreeing that the complexity is a big part of the problem. 
Um, we believe the answer to the complexity lies in automation. With the right tools, we can align the bids, the budgets, and creative with the marketer's true goal. And this can work across media. So instead of optimizing search or display or feed or video ads in a, in a silo, automation can remove that fragmentation, fragmentation both at the media level and at the user journey level. Automation can work uh, across campaigns, um, addressing some of the bigger questions I get from marketers. So one of those is, how do I get out of managing so much media across so many different campaigns? And I think you can see Google's vision in the innovation around app campaigns, which we also put into local campaigns and smart shopping. We built cross-media solutions that optimize toward the marketer's goal, whether that is customer acquisition or overall basket size or lifetime value. Um, the second big question I get is how do I understand the effectiveness of different campaigns relative to those goals that we've been talking about? Um, and I think the question of how to give credit is at the core of this fragmentation. I know so many marketers that invest tons of time trying to manage this and put it all back together. We believe that cross-media multi-touch attribution is the answer. We've been clear on that. We've already made marketers' lives easier with data-driven attribution, which dynamically assigns partial credit journey by journey so that you don't have to go through and sort of guess about how the impact was of all those different media types. How can we help marketers navigate uh, these metrics? Yeah, it's a pretty significant pivot. And we think the center of the answer lies in planning. So we've invested in planning tools that will allow marketers to sort of see the impact of their media and optimize to the business metrics rather than focusing on maybe cost per acquisition or ROI averages, which can constrain campaigns. Because a lot of this is about, which I'm sure you remember, what matters to the CFO, not what manages matters to the person who's managing the individual campaign. So in my previous role as a CMO, maintaining line of sight to achieve the business objectives was always a priority, but honestly, not that easy. Many teams naturally silo the world between brand and performance, or digital and television, or linear and OTT. But this creates more complexity without solving for this new consumer journey. So Jason, the question is, how do we solve these tensions? You know, as you asked that question, I just realized again how hard the CMO's job with all those things to sort of navigate. Uh, I guess the advice I'd give, um, and the first part is the obvious one, which is set clear goals. As much as you can, quiet the media and the vendors and the noise and focus on two areas. First, and all marketers do this, gaining a deep understanding of your customer. And second, talking to your CFO, talking to the people that you need to consult and understanding what is your business trying to accomplish? If you can get to that level of clarity and simplicity, then you can rally your entire org around what you want your marketing to do in service of that. This ultimately provides the levers for setting and achieving the objectives as you balance geo priorities, um, breadth versus depth, growth versus profit, and maybe short-term versus long-term. So the first thing is to understand what goals you're after. Second, and this is where things break down, connect those goals. And you can cascade the business goals to the marketing objectives and build back with the right KPIs to capture those marketing objectives and then give them out to everybody you're working with. So that third, you can manage your media to those business and marketing objectives. Um, as I said earlier, we, we believe automation marshals all media, targeting, budget allocation, all of it, to optimize for a central KPI. But automation is only as good as the goals that you set. What role should Google play in this? And what does a good partnership look like? For our part, we want to build better and better solutions to help you optimize toward these goals. To do that, Google is organizing itself, our products and our go-to-market in a much simpler way. We're mapping all of our products and tools to five to seven of the most common marketing objectives. You can see sort of the beginnings of this in our approach on apps, where advertisers can buy and optimize across channels. So app campaigns streamline the campaign process for the market, making it easy to promote your apps across Google's largest media properties, uh, including Search, Google Play, YouTube, Discover, uh, and AdMob in the Google Display Network. So all you have to do is bring a few lines of text, a goal that you want to optimize to, uh, and your creative, your assets, and the rest is automatically optimized um, to help your users find you. 
Uh, we do that same thing that we do in apps um, to help drive online sales as a marketing objective via our smart shopping campaigns approach. Um, and we do the same thing with driving offline sales through local campaigns to try to make all of that easier for you as a marketer. Uh, Google's product vision is to bring more of this into our tools um, so that you can give us a goal and we will bring forward the products that can work and serve that goal in an automated way. Does this really work? Can you share a real world example of how clear shared goals and automation are fueling actual business growth today? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we we have a number of these products uh, that I've been describing in market. So we've got the app solution and the driving online sales solution and, and local. Maybe I'll pick one from driving online sales. Um, last year in preparation for the holidays, uh, a partner of ours, an online handbag company called Dagny Dover, was looking for an efficient way to sort of drive their overall sales and maximize its overall advertising spend effectiveness. Together uh, with their agency uh, uh, called Mason Interactive, the brand launched on this Google Smart Shopping campaigns experience. Um, and they let machine learning decide where and when to show products for customers who are more likely to buy. Um, the result of this uh, sort of went right at their goal. Uh, was that they saw more than a 300% increase in conversions, their overall goal of driving effectiveness. And then all of the proxy metrics, which are still relevant, um, fell out of that. And so you saw uh, a more than four times improvement of return on ad spend and a dramatic increase in conversion rate because they found the right customers. And overall, that drove a decrease uh, in their cost per acquisition and improvements in ROI. So all the proxy metrics uh, were successful, but they were secondary to that overall top line growth that we're able to achieve by unifying all of these efforts and serve the true goal that the marketer articulated. Earlier, you've mentioned we are packaging products to the top marketing objectives. Can you tell me what it means and what the practical takeaway is for our audience here? Uh, yes, we put together a marketing objective series um, focused on practitioners and marketers and agencies um, to help you understand how to make some of these changes we've been talking about. Um, it includes stories like the Dagny Dover example, so you can learn how to transform your business and rethink your goals, especially in light of COVID-19. It'll also help you understand the levers you need to get right for common marketing objectives. Uh, and it'll help you effectively use Google products in combination together to reach those goals that you've worked so hard to set.